They nurture New York's most vulnerable caregivers in group homes for the developmentally disabled, but now their salaries could be pinched as the budget is worked out in Albany. Families say that that could have serious consequences. CBS 2's Jennifer McLogan reports. Harvey Weisenberg of Long Beach sits on the boardwalk bench dedicated to his developmentally disabled son, Ricky. The angel is my special child who could never speak or cry, and now is blind. But gives love. The unconditional love from Ricky is especially poignant now that his mother Ellen has died and the caregiver he depended on in his group home left for a better paying job, says Weisenberg, a former New York assemblyman. Give our people who had the most difficult job in the world a living wage. Many want the state to provide a higher living wage to retain experienced workers who feed, wash, and nurture the most vulnerable. It's difficult to compete with big box stores now that the minimum wage is. $15 an hour, says the president of New York Disability Advocates. The workforce, over 70% are women, uh, over 50% are people of color. Turnover rate of 36.2% uh, is just so alarming. The salary uh, just does not keep up with their needs. The governor proposing a 1% cut in Medicaid funding and deferring a 1% cost of living adjustment due to the pandemic. The Senate and Assembly's counter budget proposals would restore cost of living adjustment and restore the governor's cut in Medicaid funding to help pay operators of nonprofit group homes. The state received more than $12 billion in aid from Washington. Advocates want some of that for caregivers. A spokesman for the State Division of the Budget says specific funding restorations will be done in consultation with the legislature over the course of budget negotiations. People are more important than the projects that they're spending the federal money on. 36,000 New Yorkers like Ricky live in group homes with complex Complex needs that their caregivers are able for now to provide. On Long Island, Jennifer McLogan, CBS 2 News.